Hi, it's me, Cindy, and I have another haul. I know, it's crazy. I have another haul. Um, this one, in my defense, I didn't spend anything for. Um, my husband and I went to a um, moving sale yesterday, and he purchased a few um, chunky items. He spent $50, and he said to the couple who were having the sale, um, I want this, this, and this, and if if I do that, uh, can my wife have whatever book she wants for free? And they said, sure. So the first book I saw that I wanted to get was this, Mike Mulligan, Mike Mulligan and his Steam Shovel. And when I was a kid, I remember my first grade teacher reading this to us as a class, um, Mrs. Goodell, and I loved it. I remember being so worried when he got himself dug into the hole with no way to get out. And when I brought it home for Jason, Theron said how much he loved it as a little boy. And then, of course, Jason loved it. And all of Jason's books got, we either donated them, gave them away, or the ones that we had hoped to, click, to keep got ruined <clears throat> in our loft when the roof leaked and we didn't know it. So... Yeah, so we have that, and when I grabbed this, Farron said, you are not cutting that up. So this is, this is on the, the Do Not Touch pile. The next book is very similar in, in the sense that um, for Jason's first Christmas, I bought this book. Actually, I think I bought it with S&H Green Stamps, uh, Richard Scarry's Cars and Trucks and Things That Go, and Jason was three months old his first Christmas, so he didn't touch it, but by the time... The next summer rolled around before his first birthday. He was his, his real first word was rum, rum, rum. And he would sit with the car and go back and forth with it. And he loved this book. He would actually sit on it. And he ended up ripping the pages because he was, you know, unknowing. And he would try to turn the pages while he was still sitting on them. And so for his second Christmas, I got him another copy. And he took care of that one. Um... And, uh, but he loved this book, and he loved it until he was probably seven or eight years old. And, but like I said, it was destroyed. So when I saw it, I, I held it up to the parent, and he goes, you're not going to cut that one up either. So those two are for the vault. Not sure how we're going to do with that. But the rest of the books I got were um, either ones that I've always uh, wanted to get my hands on for one reason or another, or that I've learned are great staple type things or will make potential books. The first, this one here is a volume of Robert Louis Stevenson's A Child Garden of, Garden of Verses. It's not in great shape. It's this fine's coming apart here. I think it was a part of a collection. There were other books in the collection. I got it just so I could insert some poems in other journals. Um, you know, the the Land of Nod. Um, I have a little shadow, the shadow. I love that poem. Jason always loved it. My nieces and nephews, nephews love it. So, yeah, I'm thinking it would be fun to cut this one up and put throughout whatever books. But then, after I had that one in my little pile, I saw this one, which is a, a nice large one with a dust jacket. And it's illustrated by Tasha Tudor. Um, I didn't even look at the cover. No, it's just plain. So nothing to nothing to, nothing to see here, folks. But this one's just so beautiful. I mean, Tasha Tudor is such a lovely artist, and um, and then the, of course the the yeah, just just so pretty. Um, and I, I I will probably cut this up. I don't think I have a problem cutting it up um, and using the pages in the same way, but you know, a little more special because it is so pretty. So, yeah. Got that. Saw this book. I liked the cover. I thought it would make a really cool junk journal. But it's called A, Ch a Child's Book of Flowers. And um, it's an old library edition. But the the watercolor I type images are very sort of Edith Holden-ish. Um, not anything near her her work but kind of like that and every other page has a color illustration 
Um, and even the, the black and white are pretty. So, yeah, I picked that up. Another great find was this set of four Beatrix Potter books. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. The Tale of Benjamin Bunny. The Tale of Jemima Puddle Duck. And the Tale of Tom Kitten. Um, and they're in excellent condition. I see no sign of anywhere whatsoever on these books. No even fingerprints or, or writing or whatever. And they're, you know, obviously written by her and illustrated by Be Beatrix Butter as well. Beautiful. And I had to have those. So they came home with me. And, of course, I saw this. I don't have any plan for it. But the illustrations are just wonderful as... Uh, you know, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. It was one of Jason's when he was little, and I just had to have it. I mean, you know, yeah, so got that one. I saw this book um, by Coretta Scott King on Nat Turner, and it has some fantastic illustrations in it. Um, Civil War... Um, and abolitionist era stuff, and um, I just thought it would make it would be great for history type journals and that sort of thing. I even think it, it, one or two pieces might find their way into my Little Women books um, because, after all, the marches were abolitionists. Um, and then I found a couple of bird books children's bird books. This one is Let's Find Out About Birds. And that's, I'll have to lift that out of there carefully because that's kind of cool. Um, and it's got some real pretty soft illustrations. Love the ostrich there. Isn't that great? So I think I can use these in lots of ways. But most specifically about a book about birds, which I'll probably do at some sort of time or another. I got that. And then there's this one, the Adventure Book of Birds. And this is more like a field guide. Um, doesn't have huge bits of illustrations, but it even talks about how to build bird houses and it has identifying points of various birds. And um, then it's got this little section here with color. Um, they call it a color guide to birds. And it's just a few pages, but it's it's perfect for junk journal use. So there was that. I think I'm, my little house of cards is going to fall apart over there. Then I found this co copy of the Ugly Duckling and it's just pretty and a sweet story and how could I not? Don't know how I'll use it. Uh, uh, it it'll come to me. It might even slide its way into the bird book. I don't know. But it's it's just lovely. The illustrations are so pretty. Children's books are all about illustrations, right? And I got this book about owls. And um, I'm not particularly into owls, but I know someone who is. And I thought I might send it along to her to use maybe in her very first junk journal that she's talking about making. So I got that one. And... This one is the story of a monarch butterfly, an extraordinary life. The cover just begged to be taken. Um, and it, the illustrations are fantastic. So I couldn't resist taking that one. I mean, look, just the flower um, habitat type pictures are just so pretty. So, yeah, that one had to come home with me. Then I came across this book, which is, it's, it's called A Biography of George Washington in His Own Words. And I'm not sure if it's an autobiography or if they used his writings to do the biography. Either way, what I really liked about it was um, these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful pictures um, diagrams, illustrations, um, 
just fantastic uh, ephemera in the making. I mean, just beautiful. So after I've read it, which I have to read it, because I am a history buff and why not, um, I'll be taking it apart, and I think there's a colonial history, or a colonial themed book or two in my future. But I also found, not long after that, I found this one on Mount Vernon, which was a, a neat little companion book. I imagine they were purchased at the same time, but I don't really know that. And um, so, yeah. It's, it's, it's got a lot of the same kinds of pictures, but these ones are in color. And so I think I'll have a good time with those. So while I was on that kind of a, a theme, I kept, I just ran with it, and I found some U.S. history books. Um, this one is from 1600 to 1740, and this one is 1820 to... 1860. I did not find one for the intervening years, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, I can I can make do. Then I found this one, New World History and Geography in Christian Perspective. Um, it's a homeschooling book by Abeka, I, and I couldn't help myself. I had to have that as well. And this one is Our American Heritage, and it's also Abeka. Um, homeschooling, and so I think that little package all together is going to make a really nice journal. So, yeah, that's my haul. Now, um, so I, I, and I don't even have to feel guilty because I didn't spend any money. And it'll make it easier to cut them up, too, because if I didn't spend anything, who cares if I cut them up? So there, that's it. That's my haul. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends. Leave a comment. Subscribe and come back.